Hello friends, from today onwards we will uh, discuss 2, 3 or 3, 4 lectures on indoor air quality. So, today uh, you know a kind of introduction we will uh, have about indoor air quality that will include like uh, what is basically uh, this uh, indoor air pollution, what are the causes of indoor air pollution, what are the major sources, then how indoor air quality is defined and what are the historical you know background or perspectives in that sense and what is the importance, why do we really worry about indoor air quality and what are those important parameters that influence the indoor air quality and then some health impacts which are associated with different pollutants which we get exposed in indoor environment or micro environment of the buildings etcetera. Then a few uh, you know like uh, important things or aspects like sick building syndrome that we will discuss and what is the uh, role of ventilation in maintaining air quality of indoor environment that we will also discuss and uh, later on we will have concluding remarks. So, when we talk about indoor air pollution basically we refer to those chemical, biological or physical uh, you know contaminants which are present in an indoor air okay? and that may uh, you know result into some sort of uh, health issues uh, to the receptor to the people who are living inside the uh, that particular environment. And you know most of the time we feel that uh, this air pollution problem is only outdoor problem or only ambient air related problem and that may be the reason that uh, you know most of the discussions happen is regarding only ambient air quality. We have so many you know standards like national ambient air quality standards, but related to indoor uh, you know air quality hardly any standard are there. So, uh, th there is a huge gap. We, we think that only in industrial areas or industrial environment or outdoors this air quality may deteriorate and there may be air pollution kind of thing. But fact is that uh, you know the air inside the buildings or the micro environments can be uh, highly polluted and we are not aware of that you know several kind of pollutants may be there inside the buildings and we can get exposed to that. Sometimes at, at times you know the air pollution inside the building is more than the ambient air okay? and there are certain reasons we will discuss about those aspects also. So, when we uh, you know talk about the causes of indoor air pollution, then uh, we come across like for example, uh, air tightness of uh, building may be responsible because it prevents the air exchange. <coughs> okay? Circulation is inhibited, air circulation is inhibited and whatever you know emissions are being generated indoor uh, like from kitchen or from smoking or um, any other activity like from uh, uh, dryers or uh, uh, washing machine or mopping and uh, you know brooming all those kind of activities they can generate a lot of uh, dust or air pollutants and they may be inside the building because uh, this air tightness of the building may prevent to get them out and there may not be proper ventilation. So, the poorly designed air conditioning or ventilation systems also adds to the air pollution in the micro environment of buildings. Then indoor sources of air pollution may be there as I said like uh, from kitchen or from other activities we have even from furniture or from paints etcetera there may be some passive emissions and outdoor sources of the air pollution may also contribute to the indoor environment because whenever we are opening window or uh, you know door then the air is coming from the outside and uh, you know this inside air goes outside. So, if there are significant sources outside the building and those sources are polluting the ambient air that air can flush into uh, you know rush into the building inside inside the building and that can also add to the indoor air pollution. Well, you know, so uh, when we talk about different sources, basically, you know, these are like uh, whatever gases or particulate pollution which are coming from uh, you know indoor uh, air quality problems from homes or office related activities. And as I said, it can be coming, it can it can come from outdoor activities also, whatever outdoor outdoor activities they can add. And uh, you know, these chulas or uh, in uh, kitchen plus tobacco or dust from these kind of activities they may or even when we are using some you know room freshener or 
these are basically VOCs, volatile organic compounds, they also add into the <coughs> uh, air pollution inside the buildings. So, sources can be several like building materials or furniture, furnishing items or household products like air fresheners and uh, there are numerous activities which can release uh, like even when we are doing some sort of uh, you know puja, we are burning something then whatever things are being burnt that can add into the air pollution inside unless we have proper ventilation system. Well, so when we talk of different aspects, so air tightness of the building is one important aspect because it prevents uh, you know the air exchange as I said and it can build up some hazardous uh, impact in the uh, indoor environment as uh, ventilation rates are reduced. Sometimes you know we feel about like energy efficiency that we should not go for very high intensity or efficiency of ventilation because uh, then electricity bill will be, will be very high. So, what happens sometimes people do that this ventilation rate, rate they reduce to improve the energy efficiency okay? and uh, the lower carbon emissions though, those could be the reasons to achieve, but uh, then uh, you know that can result into built up of indoor air pollutants and it can lead to development of negative air pressure inside the building. So, negative air pressure means low pressure and if air pressure is outside uh, the building is higher, then again the polluted air can come from outside to inside through cracks, through you know whatever opening is there through that air can come as you know air is uh, so uh, you know diluted fluid, uh, it is very difficult to prevent it to uh, you know move from one point to another. So, you can see here uh, when it is shown that uh, of course, there are ventilation systems then uh, some uh, positive pressures are there proper and then air goes out in from the inside to outside, but from outside to inside also air comes depending upon the pressure. So, wherever negative air pressure is there, air will come from outside to inside building, wherever positive pressure is there, air will go out to out from the building to the in, uh, outdoor environment. Well, then poorly designed uh, heating, ventilation and air conditioning HVAC heating, ventilation and air conditioning system if it is not designed properly then it can also result into several kind of pollutants like it can result into you know fungi or molds or other sickness causing micro uh, you know microbes or bacteria all those kind of things may happen right and that can add into uh, you know allergic related issues. So, in air conditioning duct if it is not clean and if it is moist and it can cause you know microbes related activities then it is very <coughs> dangerous to health issues. And return air grill it is if it is not cleaned regularly periodically that can also cause that can also uh, you know get converted into sources of air pollutants rather uh, rather than air conditioning it will you know it may reduce the temperature of course, but it can add to several kind of air pollutants. Okay. So, the sources of indoor air pollution in a typical household can be seen in this pictorial representation. For example, like uh, from bedroom can be there bathroom or air conditioning units, living room and uh, laundry room where VOCs can be generated by you know uh, these uh, detergents etcetera those kind of things, cooking devices all these kind of activities can add into one or the other kind of air pollutants inside the building. And uh, you know in office buildings then there may be additional sources like uh, photocopying machine can be there okay? and uh, heaters or some other kind of activities, carpets you know carpets capture lot of dust. If we are not doing proper uh, you know vacuum cleaning then it can be source of lot of uh, dust or particulate matter of fine nature and it is very health hazard you know. Then uh, if we uh, you know club them as uh, different kind of sources then we can say that uh, indoor human activities can add into the air pollution inside the buildings and building components and furnishing like furniture or even walls, paints etcetera, sofa set, beds etcetera everything you know dust mites can be there all those things are the cons of the concern you know from air pollutant point of view. And then uh, from outside building also as I said uh, polluted air can come inside equipments of uh, different nature can add into those chemicals lead from uh, buildings or when we are using chemicals in washroom 
uh, you know there also some fumes may be generated. Well, uh, outside the building there may be additional sources which are of usual nature as we know whether it is <coughs> from industrial uh, stack emissions or pollens from you know different trees or plants and then general vehicle log exhaust all those kind of things are there from parking lots, garages, orders from you know uh, different activities all those things can be additional sources which can add into uh, indoor air pollution. Then there may be like uh, these uh, leakages from underground uh, fuel tanks uh, <coughs> which have had petrol pumps or any other uh, you know kind of units they can have. And then moisture can also be there because if uh, proper drainage system is not there within the building if leakage is there and seepage is there they can also add into uh, these uh, kind of uh, very uh, fine uh, uh, these pollens uh, means pores or those uh, fungi related uh, issues and they can add into some microbes which are health hazard basically. Equipments as you know we have uh, exhaust fan etcetera if we are not cleaning them properly they can also be like sources of air pollutants. Even uh, you know those uh, air cleaners nowadays people use air cleaners or air filters if we are not cleaning uh, regularly those air filters rather than cleaning the indoor environment they can add into you know air pollution. So, it, it has to be cleaned regularly. So, all those kind of equipments if we are not maintaining them properly they can add into indoor air pollution. So, whether it is you know heating, ventilation, air conditioning related equipment or non HVAC means non heating, ventilation, air conditioning equipment like solvents or toners all those kind of cleaning processes all those can emit uh, one or other kind of indoor air pollutants. Different human activities as we know like uh, we are using uh, you know some uh, pest control related chemicals, pesticides etcetera they also add into pollutants in, inside the building. House activities are there you know uh, like uh, airborne dust or dirt and then uh, um, cleaning materials all those things are there for adding into the air pollution inside the uh, micro environment. Personal activities like smoking, cooking, body odor if we are not clean then we are also adding into some air pollutants. Our pets if we are not keeping our pets uh, properly clean then they can add into several kind of uh, air pollutants there, hair and uh, many things uh, you know uh, may be there. Cosmetic order can be there ok all those things whatever we are uh, using which smell that is basically adding to the air pollution. Then building components and furnishing as we discussed like uh, surfaces or open cells or uh, you know deteriorated furnishing uh, items, materials containing damaged asbestos all those kind of things are there. Then unsanitary conditions like microbiological growth on soiled or water damaged furnishing ok microbiological growth may be there in those surfaces which are moist or and dry traps may be also there which can like sewer gas related issues can also be there. So, odor causing uh, you know activities can be there for adding into indoor air pollutant. Other sources like uh, because you know accidentally some liquids are spilled that can also add into uh, some sort of pollution. Then uh, repair activities when whenever we do that also adds into some uh, kind of air pollutants. And now we come to indoor air quality because whatever we have discussed are adding to the indoor air quality they are leading us to the quality of indoor air. So, how do we define what is the indoor air quality? So, theoretically we can say that it refers to the air quality within the buildings or structures wherever we are living whether it is a residential building or the office building especially you know as it relates to the health and comfort of the building occupants ok. When your uh, you know room is properly tight I mean improperly tight I would say and it is not ventilated properly then lot of suffocation can be there CO2 build up may be there and uh, you are not having uh, you know proper oxygen for your body and uh, ultimately you may fall sick ok. So, indoor air quality is basically defined by the uh, depiction of concentrations of different pollutants and thermal conditions plus uh, you know humidity related issues also and uh, some you know air pressure if it is you know in uh, having negative kind of thing. So, then uh, different air pollutants come from outside and they have uh, you know health impacts of negative nature uh, discomfort and performance of buildings occupants occupants can 
performance means working performance can reduce, efficiency can reduce, you may fall sick, you may not attend your school or college or office yeah, and you have to attend, uh, you have to visit the doctor because of some respiratory problems and that may be because of this poor indoor air quality, right. So, again as we talk about the you know what is the significance of indoor air quality in terms of household air pollution. So, like you know it is given data 3.8 million die per prematurely every year from household air pollution. Okay? So, from cooking like this is 2016 data. So, those kind of things are there which really uh, alarm that we should be careful about the indoor air quality. So, uh, you know why do we study the reason we know because it is affecting our health and the environmental protection agency has given some data like people spend over 90 percent of their time indoors nowadays. And uh, you know if you look at this uh, corona means the whole world almost everyone was in inside the their houses, okay? their outdoor activities was uh, restricted uh, very severely. So, even you know this lifestyle is becoming of so that most of the people whether they are working in you know factories or in offices, okay, so they are working in some indoor environment and uh, the air pollutants uh, you know in those micro environments are 2 to 5 times higher than the outside that has been observed because of those observations these are the data. World Health Organization also you know has estimated that more than 30 percent of all commercial buildings have significant indoor air quality problems. So, that means the severity of this uh, indoor uh, air quality is affecting lot of people, lot of population and we should worry about it, uh, we should do something to improve the indoor air quality. Now, if you talk about historical perspective whether in you know <coughs> past uh, uh, those centuries this was the issue or not. So, uh, you know when we go about the literature then we find that uh, you know ever since uh, you know man first lit the fires in shelters in caves. So, indoor air quality has been a health issue basically there are evidences of uh, you know such nature that uh, you know lungs were blackened because of that particle deposition and it has been seen in this uh, mummified uh, human remains which were discovered in Egypt and Peru and those countries. Okay. So, indoor air quality you know became an important topic in 18th uh, century very much because of you know lot of uh, this coal burning and uh, fossil fuel usage and uh, first regarding deaths of uh, you know workers in mines basically and uh, th those kind of activities when even uh, this uh, when this slavery was there. So, from Africa to America when ships were uh, uh, filled with the so many people and ventilation was not proper. So, many people died and that was basically uh, because of poor air quality. Okay? And uh, then we talk about like uh, this first indication of indoor contamination in terms of asbestos concentration or asbestos pollution you know this is a carcinogenic substance as you know and this was uh, discovered by epidemiologists. So, in a 1970 study it was found that uh, you know less rate of ventilation then higher concentration of uh, radon okay, if source of the radon was uh, building material. And on uh, July 12, 1989 environmental protection agency issued a final rule uh, banning most asbestos containing products. Okay. So, those uh, whatever uh, you know building material having asbestos so that was uh, discarded or uh, you know banned for usage for the building material purposes. Indoor air pollution importance uh, of indoor air quality in terms of like from solid fuels when we are using coals etcetera uh, it accounts for 3.5 million deaths and 4.5 percent of global daily adjusted life year. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, data are there with from a study and it also accounted for 16 percent particulate matter pollution. So, that way you know it is a very significant issue uh, that indoor air quality has to be clean otherwise large number of population can get exposed to uh, its harmful effects. Okay. Then what are the parameters which affect or influence the indoor air quality? So, when we list them like rate of exchange of air from outdoor like ventilation outdoor to indoor what is the uh, air mass exchange uh, which me mechanical engineers usually uh, you know read about. 
uh, study about and the concentration of pollutants in the outdoor air, rate of emissions from sources indoors, rate of removal of pollutants like sinks are there, some indoor uh, temperature, indoor humidity, age of the indoor structures or building material, type of foundation soil because if it is contaminated like suppose it was a landfill site and you have constructed buildings there. So, maybe some uh, very harmful uh, chemicals are there and uh, you know slowly they come out of the soil and uh, they fill up uh, you know complete uh, the building atmosphere and you never know this can happen and later on we find that okay certain health issues are there. When health impacts of indoor air pollution are discussed, so you know the reduction in oxygen level of species are the reasons, those are the reasons like increase in CO2 level as I said, when you feel suffocated because CO2 uh, you know increases in a lot of qual quantity. Then temperature may also increase because of uh, certain activities, increase in humidity can also add into discomfort, okay. increase in bioaerosols and odor that can also affect our daily life. Well, when we talk about short term and long term health impact of indoor air pollution, so short term like it can cause headache or it can you know cause uh, some irritation to nose, throat infection, eye inflammation, coughing and uh, painful uh, breathing those kind of issues. You know now in winter you know many people have these issues and uh, you know pneumonia or skin irritation all those things can be in term short term kind of effect are there because of polluted air inside the micro environment. When we talk about long term effects, so it can affect the you know central nervous system, uh, the headache, anxiety all the time, okay. cardiovascular diseases can also be there, heart related diseases can also be there. Then respiratory diseases like asthmatic uh, problems may occur or even cancer causing things can also be there because of constant exposure to the polluted air inside the buildings. When we talk about uh, the pollutant specific effects, okay, their health effects whether it is outside the building or inside the building it is the same like NOx is causing irritation to the skin or eyes and the throat and it can cause coughing also. And there are some you know limits uh, are given there by environmental protection agency, some standards are there this should not exceed these are the limits. CO is having like headache even in fact CO as you know it can cause death also if high concentration of CO is uh, inhaled and we do not get aware of it because it does not smell or this is odorless, colorless. RSPM uh, respirate uh, this respirable suspended particulate matter that is PM10 okay, that can cause cancer, uh, cancer also if carcinogenic elements are you know coated in those particulate matter whether it is PM2.5 or those fine particles they can enter into our uh, system. SO2 means sulfur dioxide can uh, you know result into lung disorder or shortness of the breath those kind of things may be there and this red on can cause uh, lung cancer. Similarly, there are like formaldehyde, asbestos all these are you know uh, very uh, health effects can be there like formaldehyde can skin allergies can result from that asbestos can cause lung cancer. Pesticides again they are uh, can result in skin diseases. VOCs uh, they can have eye irritation or skin rashes, CO2 well surrogate index of ventilation because CO2 is more than ventilation is not good. And uh, when CO2 is more and oxygen is less then you feel uncomfortable. Ozone uh, you know many times we have discussed that it is very uh, you know problematic and it can cause several kind of problems. When then we come to sick building syndrome, you might have heard this terminology, you know sometimes uh, you might heard like some building is blamed like uh, if somebody goes and the family goes there, they always fall sick, you know sometimes we mark a building, this is a bhutaha building, hai. all those kind of things are there sometimes, ki do not live in that particular building, it is cursed, you know anybody, any family came to this building, they fell sick. So, you know basically that may be because of certain uh, these indoor air pollutants also. So, that is terminology sick building syndrome is there. So, this term basically is used to describe situation where you know building occupants experience some acute uh, health related issues. Whenever you live in there then you have breathlessness or some uh, you know heart related problem or whatever depending upon what kind of pollutant is there. So, specific illnesses may be there, uh, some causes can be identified 
related to the pollutants. So, the poor lighting, poor indoor air quality, poor ergonomics means you can fall if it is not designed properly and then you can say that this is cursed building, we cannot live healthy here. Uncomfortable acoustics, psychological stress because you know if light, air, all those combinations are not proper, then you do not feel good. Okay? So, those may be the buildings which are known as uh, or result into sick building syndrome. Okay, and the solutions for that that we should really care about uh, you know uh, this uh, lighting, air circulation all those things. So, we can uh, solve that problem and the air cleaning, increasing ventilation rates and uh, you know proper communication with the residents and uh, monitoring of the pollutants and then identifying the sources of those pollutants, removing them that kind thing that kind of thing can be done to make that uh, building as healthy uh, living space. Well, ventilation uh, you know ventilation plays very important role uh, for uh, removing the pollutants uh, from inside to outside. And uh, sometimes you know as I said ventilation can even increase the pollutants also if it is not properly designed. Okay? So, there may be natural ventilation, there can be mechanical ventilation or the hybrid system can also be there. So, those things uh, can be seen here like uh, here you see this ventilation rate, air flow direction, air distribution all those things basically play important role. Otherwise, you know some corners of the building will be highly polluted if ventilation is not proper. Right? Like if we talk about natural ventilation, it can be in terms of like single sided ventilation or cross ventilation, stack ventilation all those kind of things can be there. Right? And uh, in natural ventilation basically you can see here uh, these uh, spaces where uh, circulation happens properly, but it can bring pollens and other pollutants from outside air if it is not properly designed. Because natural ventilation means you allow air from outside to come inside and from inside to outside with some uh, ventilators which are naturally uh, you know taking this uh, circulation of the air. So, that way we are not controlling outside air, it is coming just from some openings. So, that may be one issue. Okay? If it is not clean air outside, then it can be an issue. Mechanical ventilation basically it can control, uh, you know, the air uh, flow, speed, volume, temperature, everything you can control because mechanically it is designed. And that way, you know, cool air can uh, come down and then uh, this warm air goes up and it can uh, get out with those particularly systems which are designed for uh, ventilation. So, you can see here like in natural uh, ventilation there may be some pockets where high level of pollutants may be there because natural ventilation cannot go to each and every corner with uniform uh, flow rate of the air. It has uh, some limitations, but mechanically designed proper ventilation system can have uniform distribution of uh, you know air circulation and that can remove the pollutants properly. In hybrid or mixed mode ventilation, uh, there are you know this combined uh, natural driving forces you use and then uh, whenever this natural uh, you know pressure difference is not there, then you use the mechanical devices for proper ventilation. When we talk about like assessment of ventil ventilation performance, so we have certain you know these uh, kind of questions which really help us to see whether the ventilation system is performing properly or not. Like for example, does this system provide sufficient ventilation rate as required? You, you can calculate that. Okay. Is the overall air flow direction in a building is from clean air to dirty zones so that the dirty zones flush out. Okay. And then how efficient is the system in delivering the outdoor air to each location in the room? And how efficient uh, is the system in removing the airborne pollutants from each location in the room so that room is having clean air? So, those kind of things can be seen and for assessment or evaluation of ventilation system. Well, uh, in totality when we talk about ventilation and indoor air quality, so basically the energy efficient residential buildings having mechanical ventilations with the heat recovery, uh, they are proved that uh, with the lower concentrations of uh, indoor uh, particulate matter PM10 or PM2.5 carbon dioxide or VOCs compared to the conventional apartments which do not have the weather properly controlled mechanical ventilation system. So, that picture, picture shows that in that uh, proper uh, you know like uh, uh, ventilated system which is controlled mechanically you can have 
healthy environment in comparison to the conventional apartments. So, that is uh, one important aspect that if you want to have good indoor air quality, have the uh, good ventilation system, okay? so that uh, you live in a better condition and you do not fall sick, you do not get exposed to uh, indoor air pollutants. So, this is uh, you know conclusions uh, uh, from this introductory lecture, we can say that the indoor air quality assessment and management need more attention as increasing number of people are spending more and more time indoor environment whether it is office or our residential buildings. And the understanding and controlling the sources and uh, dispersion and diffusion of common indoor air pollutants can help to reduce the risk of indoor health impacts. right? And uh, proper ventilation uh, you know is required to keep indoor environment healthy in terms of better indoor air quality. So, uh, I hope uh, you know with this introductory lecture, I am sure uh, you can visualize what is the importance of indoor air quality and where you know which are the sources important sources or major sources which can deteriorate the indoor air uh, of the micro environment whether it is uh, you know library or your uh, you know residential house or uh, office building or office room whatever. Okay. So, uh, with this uh, I finish this lecture and we will continue uh, you know discussing about other aspects of the indoor air quality. These are the references for more information on indoor air quality. Please go through that whenever you have time and uh, thanks again. Uh, see you again in the next lecture. Thanks. Music